By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing on the left, and I'm playing with a mono green old revised deck, and I'm playing against a player who's playing an Underworld Dreams deck. I believe he plays black and white. And as you can see, he's on the plane. He's playing an Ivory Tower, and I've had a turn one Alana or Elves. So let's see how this turns out. And there's an enchantress from my side, the 0-2 creature. And when I cast an enchantment, I get to draw a card. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see the dice. Uh, my opponent on the right is now on 21. He just gained a life from the ivory tower. I'm still on 20. And as you can see, he played a relic barrier. So then I assume there are howling mines uh, coming up. So I'm playing here a wild grove, meaning I get to draw a card from the enchantress. That's exactly what I want to do. I just want to draw a bunch of cards here and you know get some creatures out so i'm playing an aspect of wolf over my enchantress and my opponent now is reading an aspect of wolf sa says your uh, creature gets plus one plus one for every two forests in play and when it's an uneven number your power is rounded down and your toughness is rounded upwards so if i would have three forests my creature would get plus one plus two now for me i'm using this to kind of protect my enchantress against a possible lightning bolt obviously i'm playing against an opponent who doesn't play with red but that's a general idea and of course i get to draw a card from it so as you can see i played another wild grow so i got a lot of cards that turn and now my opponent is playing the howling mine with the relic barrier so that's kind of the combo when he taps his howling mine i don't get to draw two cards and then he untaps and so he gets to draw cards in his in his uh, uh draw step but i'm playing a crumble there over his howling mine playing another wild grove there are a lot of things happening here and a lot of elves and i'm attacking him now with my uh one four and that's what we're discussing with my one four enchantress and he's just pumping his factory worker and blocking so nothing really happens here kind of was calling a bluff and second main phase playing another lana elves so i've got four lana elves i kind of need one of those big bad green creatures and here's the underworld dreams from my opponent and remember i'm playing mono green so i don't have a lot against uh enchantments and i'm probably i'm not playing tranquility here because i have an enchantress deck so here's the thicket basilisk and it's quite nice it's a two four and everything that is blocked by it or that it blocks himself dies and i can tell you i have a lure in this deck so hopefully i can put a lure on it and I can deal some damage. Now this Underworld Dreams is a problem. Luckily for me, I can choose with the Enchantress whether or not I want to take a card. And there is a Mind Twist uh, that's brutal. So I'm losing two cards and yeah, I made a huge mistake here. Instead of instantly playing my Desert Twister on the Underworld Dreams because it kind of is a solution for me, the only solution in my deck, um, I chose to keep my Desert Twister in hand and now I got punished for it because of that uh, Mind Twist. And I'm playing a lure over my Thicket Basilisk, but my opponent has a Mace of If, unfortunately. So if I attack, he can simply say, okay, I'm going to send back your um, your Thicket Basilisk. So I'm kind of thinking, now, what can I do? Um, the Elvis Archers is a 2-1 for a Striker. It's not going to do much against the Mishra's Factory because it can pump itself up to 3-3. Three, three. Um, so that's not going to help me here. So I'm just passing turn. It's not great. I'm on 17. My opponent is on 22. Drawing a card, taking a, de a damage here. I'm on, um, on 16. And it's hard sometimes. I forgot to trigger. So it's interesting for me to look back at this match and see, okay, did I take all the damage correctly? I'm tapping a whole lot of mana and playing a cockatrice. So that's a 2-4 flyer. So it looks like I'm just kind of starting to expand my board and hopefully being able to put some pressure on there. Playing a lure over my cockatrice, drawing another card. It's very hard to say no against drawing cards. And I'm just attacking here with everything. And this is where it actually gets interesting because um, I believe we made a mistake in this combat step. And let's first see what's gonna happen and then I'll explain. So he's animating his factory. And because of the lures, he has to block one of the creatures with a lure on. Um, and this is where it gets interesting. So he uses, I, th I believe he's going to use his Maze of If and he's going to send back the 
Uh, so we're talking about what's the best thing to, to, to send back since you're going to get damage anyway. And kind of this is where the mistake um, came from because we were discussing it later and we were saying, hey, wait a minute, what you could have could have done is send back my Thicket Basilisk and then of course my Cockatrice has a lure but you cannot block it. So then you get to block another creature because the Cockatrice is flying over the Mishra's um, factory here. And I believe that's what we're discussing right now. Yeah, that's exactly what we're, we're still discussing. So remember, this is just kitchen table magic. Um, you know, so you're taking it easy. And so, yeah, so now we're changing the situation. So we're saying, okay, if that w would be the case, then what you would have done is you send back the Thicket Basilisk, take the two damage from the Cockatrice, use your factory as a blocker, animate it into a 3-3, and therefore you can kill my Archer, so my 2-1 for a Striker. You're still getting, you know, quite some damage in because of that um, Enchantress and those Lanorels, but it's not as bad as the, uh, the situation before. So we kind of corrected that, so that's why um, you're seeing my opponent gaining some life and me losing the archers. Um, okay, and there we go. So the situation is now my opponent is on 15, I'm on 12 after taking the damage from the Underworld Dreams. Playing a new archer. And I'm thinking, what can I do? And that, that Mace of If is, is, is really a drag for me here. And I wish I would have played that Desert Twister. At least or on the underworld dreams or on the maze of if but okay it got mine twisted so it's gone my opponent now has the suchi on the board as well so i decide to attack he probably doesn't want to trade the suchi and yeah he takes two damage i know i've got more aspect of wolf in my deck so hopefully i can like put an aspect of wolf on my cockatrice later in the game i mean he's on 13 i'm on 12. It's interesting to see what's going to happen next. And Lure Thicket Basilisk is one of the oldest combos in the book. And I guess we're discussing a few things here and discussing board state. Because I mean, look at that, how many creatures there are on, on my side of the board. And when your opponent is, is low enough, which is not the case yet, he's still on 13, but when he's low enough, I can just say, okay, I'm just going to swing in with everything, sacrifice a few creatures, but I mean, I just want to get your life total down. And it's my go, so I'm going to draw and I'm going to go to 11. And playing the lure on my enchantress, drawing another card, so I'm going to 10 life now. And I'm thinking, what do I want to do? I'm first playing something out here. Oh, playing a crumble over his Suchi. That means he does get, um, yeah, this is interesting because he was saying I'm going to play a divine offering to gain four life, but I was saying, okay, with the crumble, you already get four life. So the divine offering is not really necessary. And that's nice actually about my green deck. I'm only play with a few books to even draw more cards so there are not a lot of targets for my opponent with his artifact hate and usually decks in old school have a lot of artifact hate in them and i'm attacking now so he's sending back my thicket basilisk he has to block my enchantress because of that lure And one of the things we were talking about, and maybe uh, you know that in the comments, what happens when an opponent attacks with two creatures with a lure on and you can block them both? So, which is not the case now because one is flying, so he cannot block that with the factory. But what if you would have two creatures with lure on attacking you? Um, what we believed is that you get to choose as a defending player, um, but we're not sure. So, if you know, please let me know what happens in such a situation. And we were still discussing the life count. It's a bit messy here. It's hard to follow. But he's he's on 10 when the dust clears. He's on 10 life. I'm going to 9 here. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm now attacking with everything. He's sending back my Thicket Basilisk. And 
I'm changing my, my mind, I'm gonna count. Because I'm like, okay, wait a minute, you can pump it up and you can kill my enchantress. Do I want you to kill my enchantress? Now remember, my enchantress is, because I've got six lances, gets plus three, plus three, so it's a three, five. But I want to keep my enchantress. So he, he could have potentially killed my enchantress. And now I'm just doing it because I'm on eight. So I believe my, my reasoning here is I, I am so low, I don't want to draw any more cards from the enchantress. And my opponent has to... Ooh, this is interesting. Taking away the aspect of wolf actually doesn't matter that much. Um, but my reasoning was um, he, he's, he's low enough. He's on eight, so he has to block these creatures. Although he can actually take all this damage, then he's on one life. Because two, five, seven, because the enchantress is a zero, two now. He would be on one. He can hit me back for four. Four, no, that's, that's not going to be enough. No, he'll, he'll have to block something. But when he does, I mean, all he really can do is block the Enchantress. So the Enchantress dies, and he goes down to just one life. I'm playing a Soul Ring there. It would have been great if I, I could have played a Hurricane. Oh, <laughs> this is crazy. I remember this play. I forgot about it, but now I remember. He top-decked a balance. So I thought I was winning. He was on one measly life is on one measly life and then he top decked the balance now he loses his entire hand because I'm, I'm i have no cards in hand but this is just brutal um i felt like i kind of deserved the victory there because i put so much uh effort into it i mean i mean look at my board state but okay um this is the way it is so he's losing his hand um he's attacking i'm taking four damage going to four life drawing a card going to three Playing a single force, and he wins this first game. And this was a crazy game. I mean, I hope you could, um, you know, follow every everything here. It it was even hard for me to follow, and I'm, I'm I actually played in this game. Um, we didn't side. Oh, we did sideboard actually. Uh, my opponent didn't have a sideboard, but I put two interesting cards in. And um, let's quickly go to game number two and see what's going to happen, and if I'm able to kind of get a victory in, and maybe you know turn this match around. Game number two, and I'm on the play. And as you can see, it's not the best lighting, so I hope you can see all the cards. At least there's no glare. I didn't see any glare in game one. So I'm on the play, which is huge when you're playing mono green. I mean, you just want to have that turn one land or else. And there it is, bam, turn one land or else. So hopefully I can just play an enchantress at my turn two. And then start to draw some cards. It's actually quite interesting. You see more and more people playing an Ice Storm with the Lana Wells being able to cast an Ice Storm on turn two. Um, the idea with Enchantress, in a way, is, is, is the same. It's all about taking advantage. And in this case, you're going for card advantage with the Enchantress. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing it right here. And I'm attacking now after playing the Aspect of Wolf. So he's taking two damage, going to 18. And there's his first card. Oh, of course, Underworld Dreams. <laughs> it's, it's not great with my Enchantress. On the other hand, I'm just paying one life to draw an extra card. I mean, it's not too bad. And I, I get to choose, like I said before, I get to choose if I want to. Attacking here, apparently not finding an enchantment, or else I would have played that out, I think, first. Playing out a second Enchantress. Or maybe I'm setting up a play where I get to turn play two cards here. And there's the Abyss. Wow, and that's actually a great card against me, not having any... Uh, weapons against enchantments. I'm sacking my Lanawar Elves here, I believe. Yes, I am. Keeping my two enchantresses. Hopefully I can find an artif of an enchantment to draw some more cards. Drawing into two more cards. Taking two damage. And actually I still had to take... You see here I'm forgetting the trigger. So it's good that my opponent is reminding me. I'm on 16 here. Playing another Lanawar Elves. So as long as I can just draw creatures here to feed to the Abyss and, and maybe still attack with my enchantress, I believe I have a chance. Wow, and now my opponent is, is throwing some blockers here on the field. So this could be a problem for me. Um, taking a mana out, probably for a crumble. Uh, having to sack it on the abyss, playing a crumble, exactly. And it's, I mean, I'm happy to, to get rid of it. But, I mean, he is getting four life. I hope he doesn't forget to take four life here. And I have to take damage here again 
from the underworld and look at that i'm already on 13 so things are going really really quick tapping here what am i going to play playing a thicket basilisk attacking and my creature is now oh and and his mishras still had summoning sickness so that's uh why he didn't pump it up And I believe my opponent forgot to take life from the Suchi here. I'm not sure. The way it is now, at least he's on 12. I'm on 13. But that Underworld Dreams is definitely slowly going to kill me. Or can I kill him first? It's basically a race now. Um, I'm second my Enchantress. Drawing two cards because of that Howling Mines. I'm on 11. And there's a Lure drawing another card. I'm on 10. And I have to attack, or I have to, but I attack it with the thicket. So that means his Suchi dice has to block. And I think this is a little mistake from my part. I should have also attacked with the Enchantress. I don't really understand why I didn't do that. And here I'm taking damage from all the cards drawn because I forgot a few triggers. And that's, that's difficult. I find it hard, especially when I'm... Remember, this is just kitchen table magic. We're playing here for, for fun and... I mean, that means that sometimes you're, because you're playing casually, you're forgetting things, you're forgetting triggers. And when you're recording a match, you're like, oh, I forgot that, oh, I forgot this. But, I mean, I'm on five life. It's going to be really, really difficult. There's an abyss on the field. I have one creature. Is there a way out for me here? I'm attacking you with the Enchantress. Let's see what my opponent can do. Taking the damage, going to nine. <laughs> That's cool, I'm playing a force of nature. That's good, boom. Force of nature. And what can my opponent do here? Uh, I have to pay for the force of nature. Sacking my enchantress. Drawing two cards, going to three life. Attacking with the force. And that means he takes five damage. He's on four. And <laughs> I'm kind of joking here with the Wanderlust. Uh, it's one of those cards that I think doesn't see enough play. I'm uh, playing it out here. And that's game. My opponent is also winning this second game. So that means that um, my green revised brew can win against this uh, Underworld Dreams deck. Unfortunately, I did enjoy the games. Pretty cool. Uh, so... Congratulations here to my opponent with the win with his Underworld Dreams deck. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see some more old school magic games, you can click on the links that are appearing right now on the screen or take a look on the channel. There are more than 60 um, games of old school on there with a big variety of decks. Um, let me know what you think of the video. Let me know if you'd like to see certain decks featured on the channel and I'll see what I can do. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.